Hey guys, this is going to be another video tutorial on GSA Search Engine Ranker. In the previous tutorial, I covered some of the project settings over here and also how to get started setting up the global options menu. Also in the previous tutorial, I talked about um, proxies and how they aren't required to make the software run, but I do want to say that I, that I do recommend using proxies if you have some available or if they are in your budget. Um, if you can afford to get some proxies, I always recommend using them or using the public proxy scraper. If you do use a public proxy scraper that's built into this, it will slow things down a little bit, but at least it will keep you anonymous. So, like I said, you don't have to use proxies if you don't want to, if you don't care about that, but to stay anonymous, it's always recommended that you do use proxies. Also, in this video, you will see me using um, another piece of software. Um, this software isn't required for anything. I'm just using it. This is called Content Machine. It's basically a software that will scrape um, some articles based around my keywords and it puts them out in spin format and all that kind of stuff. I'm using this just so I can speed up the process of filling out these forms for the video because otherwise you'd have to see me sit here and write everything out. And uh, yeah, for the sake of speeding things up, I'm going to be using that software. Okay, so after your global options have been set up and you think you're ready to start your first project, you're going to click the new button. For this tutorial, I'm just going to go ahead and do articles, blog comments, I will do social bookmarks, and video. A lot of the stuff is pretty much the same, so I don't really need to fill out every single thing um, for the demonstration, but this should get you started and show you how to get everything working. Um, before we begin, um, I just want to explain down here you can see that it says keyword related target sites and it's highlighted in green and then yellow it says no keyword related target sites and that's highlighted in yellow. Um, that's because not every single type of platform uses your keywords, the keywords that you enter here. Um, that's because a lot of them aren't needed. If, you're, if you have a website on dog training and you're putting in dog training keywords, um, it's there's obviously not going to be a lot of directories or social bookmarking sites dedicated to dog training. So that's why some of these platforms it's better not to use the keywords at all. So you'll see that, for example, article sites, these keywords aren't used to search for the article sites. But for blog comments, you will use these keywords. So that's just something to take note of. Also, you can hover over platforms and it will give you more information about if the platform has a do follow link, if it, has, if it uses anchor text, if the link can move off the page, and if it allows HTML in the field. But also, you can use HTML in all these fields, and if the platform doesn't use HTML, the software will automatically strip that out for you, so you don't have to worry about that. And also, some comment fields will use BB code instead of HTML. So if you have HTML in your comment field, it doesn't matter. The software will automatically convert that to BB code for you. So you don't have to worry about that at all. The next thing is the spin convert tool. I want to go over this quickly. You can see I was already playing with it and testing it out. Um, oops. You can also expand all these windows, which I recommend doing because it's easier to work with things. Um, the first thing is comma spin. So you have um, this is just a quick way to, to put things into spin uh, spin format. So if you're wanting to put some keywords or some anchor text into spin format, you can use this tool to do it. Um, so for anchor text, let's just say we're using dog training. Um, best dog training guide, dog training videos. Oh, we would make sure and don't leave the space between the comma. What you would do is press the comma spin button and you can see that it pops it out down here in spin tax for you. Um, and then the line spin is basically if you have one word online per each line, dog training, dog training videos, this basically does the same thing, puts it out in spin format for you. 
And then also it supports Spinner Chief and the best spinner. If you have if you're signed up for any of those, you can put in your API details and it'll automatically spin those when you click the button. You can just copy and paste it into any field. So you can work with the spinner without using any other program. Also down here you have the test tool. As you fill out all these forms before you press the start button you might want to review everything and make sure it looks good. This will just show you um, it's kind of like a preview that will show you what things will look like once they're submitted. So you might want to just go over this, check everything out, make sure your anchor text is right, your URL, and uh, all that's good before going ahead and starting your first campaign. Okay, so let's get started filling out the forms. The first thing you'll see is email. This is required for signing up for certain types of platforms. If you were only using blog comments or something like that, your email wouldn't re be required. But uh, some account registration requires an email and for uh, the software to go in and validate and register and click the confirm links and stuff like that you'll need to use an email here make sure this isn't your important email address or something that you use personally just um, what I recommend doing this is what I do is if you go to fiverr.com that's f-i-v-e-r-r dot -R com type in hotmail and click search you'll see that people sell this is the one I've been using and they deliver usually within 24 hours I will give you 500 new and verified Hotmail accounts for five bucks so that's what I've been using um, 500 Hotmail as you know that's plenty to use you, you won't run out of those for a long time so that's what I recommend doing instead of having to go and create your own hotmail each time so I'm gonna go ahead and fill this out real quick okay so I've got my hotmail pasted in here the next thing you wanna do is go to the email verification tab I put my hotmail in here the password for that account and then I know I've put in so many hotmails that I know this the pop3 server by heart and that's pop3.live.com that's for hotmail port is 995 use SSL make sure you check that and then delete message when verification link was found this will just help so your inbox doesn't fill up too quickly um, and make sure and click test login successful now you know that it's capable of logging into your account and verifying emails the second field is the URL field. Um, you have a couple of options. If you want to link to just your domain, you can do that. If you want to link to all your inner pages, you can do that. There really isn't any limitation for the amount of URLs you put in here. You can completely import URLs. Let's I'll show you over here. Add URL. This is the first option. We're just going to use dogtraining.com as an example. If you only put your URL in like that then you will need to make sure and use your anchor text here so we'd use dog training uh, dog training videos if you if your URL is put in like this it'll use the anchor text that's down here okay let me show you another example you can clear that you have add URL and anchor if you click this We'll put in the same domain dogtraining.com and now you can tie anchor text to that specific URL and you can use spin text so we put dog training dog training videos dog training guide and when you click OK it automatically formats it for you so it's the URL hashtag and then spin text and every single one of these um, Anchor text will be rotated and used for only that that specific URL. And of course, you can do it again with a new URL with new anchor text, and it'll rotate up through them like that. And if you use this format, it will automatically ignore what's in the anchor text box down here. Okay, so let's clear that, and I'll show you another way. You also have the option to import from a file 
also, if you have a text file like this, you would put your domain of training.com. I'm going to go ahead and copy this a few times. We'll say this is URL2. So we'll say this could be your home page, this could be an inner page, and another inner page. So for the first URL, say you wanted a couple of keywords, make sure and put your hashtag symbol after the URL with no space. And say for the home page you only wanted one keyword, you could put dog training. Don't put it in spin tags if it's only one keyword. If it's going to be multiple keywords, you'll put it in spin tags. Dog training dog training guide and again the same goes for every URL or you don't have to put any spin text or any uh, anchor text in this file at all you would just put the URLs one per line you would save this and you would just simply go here click import from file and all of those URLs would be put in the drop down box then of course you can paste from clipboard and that's self-explanatory. Then the last thing we have is crawl online. Um, let me pause this video real quick to try and find a, a website I can use as an example. One second. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and give dogtraining.com a try. I'm only going to go one level deep, and I'm going to check to scrape it with anchor text. I'll show you what this does. So as you can see it scraped the URLs and now it's pulling anchor text to use for each page. And usually this can take a few seconds depending on how many pages you have. Okay, so you can see up here dogtraining.com anchor text is dog training videos, book reviews, training articles. As you can see that's not perfect and you might want to change this. If you want to change it all you do is simply click it brings up a box to edit the data and you can go in and change your keywords here. Click OK. Select which URLs you want to use. Click OK and now it's down in the drop down box and you have all your URLs and anchor text right there for you. And again if you have it like that this anchor text will automatically be ignored. OK the next field is the keywords field and like I said before this is only used for the targets or the platforms that are highlighted in green so I still recommend putting in as many keywords as you can so if you have some kind of keyword scraping tool um, it's always good to list as many as you can and also keywords in this field you don't use spin text you use it each keyword separated by a comma but the easiest way for this, for me, for me to use this, or for anyone to use this actually, is to just import a text file with one keyword per line. Um, I'm not going to show that right now because it's pretty straightforward. So for keywords, I'm just going to put a couple in. I'll put dog training, uh, dog videos, help with dog training. Okay, that field is done. I also wanted to note as the software is going out and scraping new targets it's automatically going and scraping the metadata from those new websites and using them as keywords so as it scrapes new targets and you have the software running for a while you'll see new keywords start to drop into this right here and um, if you want you can check them off and um, it'll automatically add those and start using those to search but if you don't want to do that, or don't want to bother with having to go in and check them off, um, check them off yourself, you can check this button here, and it will automatically uh, check the keywords for you. The thing about that is, um, it uses, it scrapes the metadata, so the metadata might not always be exactly what you're looking for. So keep that in mind when using this feature here. We've got the anchor text field filled out already. City, it comes, uh, it already comes with some of those in there. You can change them if you want. Article title, pretty straightforward. I'm going to open up my content machine software real quick.